Zephyr is a structure from motion photogrammetry software, 100% Italian, just like me. And now that I'm recording this video, it's March 2019, we are at version 4.5. It all started out a few years ago with a software whose purpose was taking some images, taking some measurements and mixing up together in order to give you 3D modeling, dense cloud, uh, digital elevation model, ortho mosaic, uh, 3D model with texture, mesh plus texture. But in this uh, in the past in these past few years, uh, the guys of 3D Flow, that is the company that developed Zephyr, added to this core to the core to the software's core a lot of other blocks that ma managed to deal a lot of data that might make, make your life as a surveyor or as a 3D data analyst much more easy because they are efficient they can register point clouds from different sources they there's a block there's an algorithm that is able to make very efficient masks on images before the the processing inside the structure from motion algorithm so zephyr now is a very complex software that may and you may have some benefits using it because it is very 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 interesting in this video i'm gonna walk with you oh better um better saying why don't you walk with me in this and the next videos inside zephyr to see what are its features and see if it can suit your 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 requests or can be benefits for your work i'm gonna start with taking the images and bringing it inside zephyr but this is the the main area this is the workspace of zephyr this is 3d flow logo um unlike other softwares which uh, you in which you have to select the images that you want to process and bring it inside it in zephyr you have to start a new project and before seeing before actually seeing the images you have to launch at least one process that is the alignment so you have to launch the align process and generate the point cloud the the sparse point cloud in order to see the images um just to let you know which version i'm using i'm using the 3d flow zephyr aerial version the aerial version is the most complete version of zephyr there are some other um version of zephyr starting from a free one then going through a light one uh, but you can check them out at 3dflow.net i'm gonna make i'm gonna put the link in the description this is the 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 most com complete version of zephyr and is the aerial version 4.530 so let's start a new project because you have to start a new project workflow new project it opens up a, it's a, a wizard a project wizard where you can choose some options but don't worry because you don't have to put the flag on these boxes necessarily now because everything can be done in the next step next steps of the uh, structure from motion process there's just one box that i advise you to check and it's this bo box here check online pre-computed Pre, for pre-computed camera calibration uh, that means that Zephyr if you have an online connection a internet connection Zephyr can access to online database to take from this database uh, the information of the combination of camera and lens that you use for taking the pictures that you're gonna process so I'm gonna hit next and there's an, uh, another another window where you have to add the picture so right left click on this big plus button and you have to choose the images that you want to process these are some images that are jpeg files but you can also import tiff files png files gif bmp uh, and also of course where they are here dng files so the raw files if you have the ability to register if the camera that you're using have the, has the ability to register raw files i'm gonna click here apri means open and here are the pictures that are listed inside these boxes this box if you want to remove some of these pictures just select the, select them or 
multiple select them and click this minus button if you somehow forgot some pictures just click on this plus button and check your folders for pictures that you want to bring them inside the, this box when you've done next so Zephyr um, access to this uh, kind of database online and assign for each pictures some information that are deal that, that deals with uh, the deal with uh, the the camera and the lens and is fc6310 that's kind of a unique id for the camera and the lens that i use for these pictures especially i used uh, a dji 4 phantom 4 pro drone and the camera that attached to this drone and it's kind of a unique uh, yes unique uh, identifier for that camera which has got 9 millimeters real focal length which is 24 millimeters 35 millimeters equivalent focal length and here's the resolution uh, i don't know why uh, these pictures are, are in low resolution well actually i processed them inside adobe lightroom and then i exported them in low resolution i, I don't know why because it's always better to deal with high resolution camera but um, high resolution images but that's not the point of this video because i um, just want to show you how what happens when you bring inside the software the pictures and you launch the align um, align photos so next i'm gonna go i'm gonna go quick on this window because i think that i'll go back in next videos i'm gonna choose some alignment parameters that is aerial pictures because the pictures has been taken have been taken for from a drones a drone uh, preset mm, i'm gonna choose default but i can choose between deep or fast it's kind of uh, how how deep the software is going to go in the analysis of the pictures to find point that match one picture with the other so i'm gonna hit next there's kind of um a quick recap of what we just we just decide in this uh, in the previous windows uh, these are the picture listed here these are the position of the pictures here because they have information in terms of point of shoot uh, coordinates latitude longitude and if you hit run the software will start the process and at the end of the process you will have the photos aligned and the new point sparse cloud in the 3d model area at the end of the process zephyr shows you how it went and there is a window here where there are the picture listed then with the file name and there's a big yes green yes under the in the column which is titled reconstructed so that means that the picture has been aligned been aligned and the sparse point cloud has been reconstructed so i hit finish here we go the the me the main area um is now filled with two kind of information one is the the point cloud this is the sparse point cloud that has been reconstructed after then all the images and be has been have been aligned and there are the images too these are the images the location of the images one respect to the other and all the pictures um relatively to the ground to the area that has been surveys somehow that being where the drones fly and took the pictures here are the picture listed here in the in this box in this area here that is the picture area but there also also the log area where you can have track of what happened inside the software let do some let do something with the pictures and let's um let's inspect the picture and let's see what you can do once you have with the pictures once you have a point cloud a sparse point cloud inside the area you can see the sparse point cloud here and you can see the cameras here these are this is the project area there are some boxes this the these boxes are empty uh, the first two boxes now are full with with something the the camera boxes is full with the picture so you get the picture listed and you have this flag so you can i don't know if you can see them okay pay attention to this the position of the cameras and the little thumbnails you see if i click on this box check or uncheck i can 
make this the picture appear or disappear or if you want to make all the picture disappear you just right click on the first one hide hole and bring them back show hole if I double click on an image here but also if I double click on an image here I access to the information that are are relative of each picture so this information um, gives you yeah some information about the picture so there's the the path where the picture the file of the picture is stored there's the resolution so 2048 pixels on the wide length one 1364 pixels on the short side this is the position of the center this position of the center is in a precise coordinate reference system and is the this coordinate reference system that is named here that is written here that is wgs84 is a projection so it's utm zone 32 north it's not longitude and latitude uh, by default you got a projected a projected coordinate system but you can always change this in this these settings inside the software inside Zeph. then there's uh, the you get the chance to show the x information that that opens up a new window where there are written some more information about the manufacturer the model so camera plus lenses the software that i use after having shot the pictures with my drones on the with my drone on the field i processed the raw file with adobe photoshop lightroom classic and i exported them back in jpeg low resolution file unfortunately i'm sorry about that date and time uh, shutter speed then there's some information about the aperture and there are some more information about the focal length and some other stuff about the exit files or the the kind of the properties of the pictures in terms of exposure and acquisition of the data then there are some more information here about the internal parameters so these are features that will be really important in the next phase well actually next steps well actually they have been already important because alignment of the picture is based on this information or uh, better saying that this information have been calculating have been calculated after the picture have been aligned so these are the information about the focal length focal length the real focal length that's been recalculated after all the picture has been uh checked one with the other then there's the optical center cx cy there's the radial distortion the tangential distortion distortion and then some more other information we'll go through them in the next step of this video next video about uh next videos about zephyr because these are more uh, in-depth uh, um, topic about photogrammetry and structure for motion processing so if i double click if i uh sorry if i right click here on an image i can make here the, the image um pop up in the two-dimensional in a two-dimensional viewer so a zephyr opens up a new window where the pictures the picture is shown in the 2d dimension and i can scroll in scroll out or panning so i i use the the wheel the mouse wheel so i scroll for zooming and i click on the wheel for panning as you can see this image is a low resolution image <laughs> you can see from my extreme zooming in and these pixels are so big so uh, the original the original picture were not so so low resolution then you can do something more you can well properties and show x information we already seen them uh, you can add the control point from images what does that mean it means that um, you can open up a window a, an image and you can add control points so you can pick points in an image where you know some information about the precise coordinate of that point and you can define the position of that point inside this image and you can do that with all the points that you know from the field activities that you did on the field and you can do that for all the pictures that uh, are inside that make makes your that make your data set i'm not gonna do that now because i'm gonna deal with them in next video so i'm gonna cancel this window uh, right click on the image i can create a control point on camera position that means that um unlike what i just 
and I show you that it was making a point, a control point, defining a control point inside the image with information on something that has been photographed, I'm going to create a control point on camera position. Um, so camera position became a control point. So if you see here, the software uh, just uh, create a control point that is uh, that match the position of the center of the camera. The control point, point has, has, has been added here in the control point GCP ground control point panel and you can see that I I can I can show I can make the software show for me the coordinate of the the control point just flag in here and I see the coordinate in the projected coordinate system which is WGS84 how can he uh, define this coordinate well because he has got information about the position of the camera because the camera were attached to a drone the GPS send information to the camera the, the each image has got exit files that define its position so uh, the software is able to uh, define this position in terms of latitude and longitude and altitude and convert them uh, through some really uh, quite simple equations into a projected system which is WGS84 UTM zone 32 north um, I'm not gonna use in the next video control point based on the center of the image i'm going to use control point in the image where something has been photographed but that's an option that you have inside zephyr i'm going to remove and you can if you want you can oh that's not, that's nice i just i was just for, forgetting about that um if you click on an image so let's move let's rotate this this point cloud here if you click on the image just click, click not right click the software moves the 3D space, move the point cloud in kind of a two-dimensional view or orthometric two-dimensional view. You can see from here there's the X and Y um, axis here that define the horizontal plane and it projects the picture that you've just selected on the point clouds. That's interesting because you are able to see how the reconstruction, how the building of the point cloud has gone um regarding to the picture that you have used so um, let me say for instance i'm gonna use these pictures and i see that in this picture more or less um a lot of uh, the, the point of the sparse cloud are distributed are well distributed all over the picture but if i move from to a picture that on the that's much that is much on the side of the area that i uh, just survey with my drone i can see that in this area there aren't any uh, picture there are very few points here and that's because maybe this is a, a side picture and there are no more pictures with enough overlap with this image that I've just selected so you can have a kind of uh, information about how was the reconstruction and the building of the point cloud that are that made the, the sparse cloud I think that I could close here this video uh, you can rotate the pictures I don't know well actually I'm not sure how this could be useful but you can right click and rotate the pictures um, let's see if there's something more um, you can open containing folder so you're going to check the pictures in the folder where it is stored in your pc uh export camera and photo and points this we're gonna go through this in next videos because this is quite interesting because and there is a lot of stuff to see in this uh, in this tool and in this option you can remove the pictures if you you don't want it anymore inside your project i hope you enjoyed this video Zephyr is a really nice software and we're going to go through it in the next videos. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to write in the comments below. If you got more, if you need more information about me, you can connect with me at www.metricaltalks.com. And thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Ciao.